Hello everyone, so I'm recording this video for the court. So basically we're going to discuss how my, how the dismissal that I received from McMaster University is false and how McMaster University is providing contradictory statements not only to me but to my sisters and even to Nature Journal, Impact Factor 70. Just imagine that. So let's see what happened exactly from McMaster University administration. So first of all, what triggered the BMG? What is the actual reason? The actual reason is because I requested for IT and security card investigations to know who deleted the genuine Excel sheets. Once I requested for it, I received a ban letter. I received a BNG letter. Let's explain this. So this is the first email. Let's open it. When this email is sent, as you see here, this email is sent on February the 3rd, 2019, 11.34 p.m. So it is just a few minutes before February 4th. My lawyer, Michael Lizage, he told me the BNG letter, the BNG letter had written against you on February 4th. So basically, we can automatically conclude that what triggered the BNG is because I requested for what? Look at here. I requested for what? A professional information technologist to intervene immediately to check what? It is a time sensitive incident. To check what? To check two things the security cards to do security card investigations and to investigate who deleted the Excel sheets. Because from the Excel sheets, we're gonna know from the security cards and from the Excel sheets, from the IT investigation, we're gonna know who deleted them, who de deleted the genuine Excel sheets, the shareable genuine Excel sheets. Who wants us, me and Muhammad Bakr, not to have timely access to the actual data. Once I, re once I wrote this email, a BNG had been uh, issued against me. But let's read what the BNG mentioned. So we, if we zoom in, let's look at the black, uh, this red box. So basically, I will let everybody here to read it. But basically, it doesn't mention, they said, I harassed a person. I harassed, and I have two supervisors, Muhammad Bakr. He is my main supervisor because I'm an electrical engineer, right? And Bruce Medican is a secondary supervisor. So what's mentioned here, they didn't name the person. They didn't name the name of the person. They said, one of your supervisors, I communicated with him for 20 times. I communicated with him for five times to report what happened in the lab, period. I'm just reporting to him what happened. There is a serious incident happened in the lab I try to call him just for one thing. I'm calling him every day. So basically, you know, he's my supervisor. I call him, I, 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 meet, with, I meet with him face to face every single day. So I do not know what's, the, what's going on here. But I counted all of the phone calls that I made. They were five, okay? So the university is saying I, I make 20, 20 phone calls and I left two angry voice messages. I told them I want to access them. They didn't give me anything. Because as you know, if I make phone calls, there must be call logs, OK? So the university didn't give me any evidence. From day one, I request even to know the name of the professor. They didn't give me anything. And if, if we go to the second page here, there is nothing mentioned about how to appeal this decision. So basically, if I want to appeal this decision to the BNG, I have to go to Roger Claudry the vice president administration. We literally know that on May 2019, the university did not want to tell me anything. They just, they just want to traumatize me so that the investigation, the IT investigation and the security card investigation will never happen because they know who did that. They know who did that. And by the way, until now, there is no investigation in relation to security card and IT investigation until today. I insisted to have them until today, since 2019, and until today, nothing happened. So what happened from McMaster, they tried to say, instead of being genuine people 
and investigate the matter? No. Bruce Milliken is the bribe bri associate dean of graduate studies, and he's the chair of the department. So instead of investigating the matter and be genuine people, they did something else. What they have done is they called the police, literally. Who called the police? It's Alessandro Hustling, my enemy. My enemy, you know. If you talk to Faisal Baba, he's going to tell you who is my biggest enemy in the globe after Abdel Fattah, Abdel Megid al-Sisi. It is Alessandro Hustling. So she called the police. She, in the beginning, when I told her, you called the police, she denied. But she called the police, and she has a relationship with Jiren Dekeer. OK, so those guys, actually, you know, if you, not, if you guys know about Jiren Dekeer, you know, he has a very lengthy discriminatory profile. So what they try to do is to say, I have paranoid thoughts and things like that, instead of investigating the matter. So let's open what happened with Hamilton police. So Hamilton police, as you see here, even the occurrence is completely blacked out. Blacked out. Mental health issues. I do not want anybody to intervene with, uh, with me that way. It is regardless, even if I have an anxiety or trauma or whatever, it doesn't, you shouldn't be involved in any, of my, in any of my health issues. You get away of my way, okay? But as you see here, if we zoom in, they are saying, I'm calling the staff and the faculty, staff and faculty, at all hours, I'm not making sense and is paranoid, okay? So you now understand why the Hamilton police came to me with cost, because they are trying to say I'm paranoid. Not only that, not only that, they, they try to say I'm grandoise and things like that. You guys will read it. And <laughs> horribly, they are saying I'm not apprehensive. So see, see here, Muhammad was initially apprehensive. However, it spoke openly, and then they said lots of lies afterward. So basically, can you imagine what, what, what they are trying to do, guys? They are trying to put me in the hospital forcibly. Forcibly. For what? They just want to say I'm crazy, and that's it. And instead of the investigation, and that's McMaster University, and instead of doing investigation, I make sharp science, high quality science. If a professor did something wrong, they're going to say the student is paranoid. This is how they think about the world. This is how they govern their university. OK? So let's see whether uh, Drew Hustling talked to, to, uh, to the police, because the police didn't tell me why they came here. Because if Drew Hustling, then she had paid bribes directly or indirectly, socially, psychologically, financially, otherwise, or religiously even to the police. There is no other way rather than this, because the police are lying. So Alessandro Hasling understand that. And Alessandro Hasling, you know, through the material that we received, she only communicate with Jeden Dekeer, the person who has the ex-head of Hamilton police, the person who has a lengthy discriminatory profile against Muslims and black people. So let's see whether Alessandro Hasling whether she communicated with the police or not, and what she said. Okay, so I was pressing until I got an answer from her. And here she answered. When she answered me, Marsh, Marsh, so in the beginning of the Marsh, as you see here, in the beginning of the Marsh, what she said, several weeks ago, she means February 5th or February, or February, several weeks ago, I personally called, called cost. I don't understand, you know. I, I, Four police officers, you know, like, you know, each of them is huge like a door, came with a single nurse. So she called the police, not the cause. But anyway, let's continue. During a time when you weren't responding to our requests to meet with our office, and yet I was concerned that you were distressed. You see here what she's saying? She's saying distressed. But the police is trying to stay paranoid, and you see the report of the police. So she is lying. She is saying something that's never happened. She told the police something, and she's telling me another thing. She is lying. Okay? So that's the second thing. So we shouldn't believe Alessandro Hustling at all. Why? Because this person is my enemy since 2015. 
this person literally tried to return me, return me back to Egypt so that my life will be terminated. This person is just nothing but criminal. So she is lying, as you see here. And let's see whether, whether she, they really tried to communicate with me. You know, I don't want to meet with, with her or, or enter her office at all. And this is based on the recommendation of Faisal Baba. I shouldn't meet with this person at all or her office. But they violate the recommendation. They violate the decision. You know, guys, you know, I, I had been removed from the school before. And I, I have legal issue with McMaster. And then I returned it with a full scholarship. And then afterwards, you know, based on the report that Faisal Baba had provided, I didn't have access to it until now. But based on that, you know, because my main complaint is Alessandra Hustling is harassing me significantly. When she talked to me, I really wish to die. So she insisted to talk to me. However, I'm a professional person. When the university communicates with me, I respond. So let's see what happened. Let's see what happened. Am I responsive or no? Okay, here is my email. So Tim Cameron, February 5th. I'm responding to him. I'm responding to him February 5th. And then February 7th, so these are the same days. The same days that the cost came to me, the police came to me. So she's lying, I'm responsive, I'm responsive. And I talked to Tim Cameron by phone. I told him, give me, give me your phone number. This is just a single communication between me, between me and the Cameron. So, and remember, you see the contradiction here. Let's see the contradiction. So basically she's saying, I'm talking here, if we zoom in, if we zoom in, she's saying, I'm talking, I'm talking all hours, all hours, you know, you know, mentally ill people, those officers. I'm talking all hours. I didn't sleep. I just talk, talk, talk. And draw hustling is say the opposite. I'm not responsive. So you see the contradiction? The contra this is the second contradiction. But let's move forward. As you know, guys, they are saying I harassed one of my supervisor by trying to call him 20 times over the weekends. So they banned me from the university. They destroyed my life based on I make phone calls to my supervisor. Can you imagine that? Let's see, let's wait and see what's gonna happen afterwards. But here we go. Number two in my sister affidavit. affidavit. My sister is an expert in cognitive neuroscience. You can see the first red box and see point two of her affidavit. You can realize that Muhammad Bak, after all this happened, after the police visited us, after everything is finalized, Muhammad Bak called us and then we talked with him about the police. I didn't talk to him. It's my two sisters. You know, when he tried to communicate with me, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't talk to him because based on the fact I feel like he's a venerable person and I cannot rely on a venerable person, literally. He's not strong enough. And, and my battle should have strong people. And what happened is Muhammad Bakr, Muhammad Bakr extremely apologized to us and he wanna to apologize to me. So just imagine that. They are saying I'm harassing Muhammad Bakr while Muhammad Bakr had never asked me not to communicate with him through the phone call. He never asked me to do that. And then afterwards he want to apologize to me. I don't know why he want to apologize to me. Maybe he said something that he didn't mean it. He exaggerated something. I don't know. Because I do not have the material. But we counted the, co the call logs. There are five. So the university is lying. The university dis that didn't provide any evidence in regard to what they have said. Okay? So let's go for evidence eight. So what evidence eight says on February 13th, 2019, I sent an email to Tim Cameron. You know, guys, there is Alessandro Hustling, the head of the Student Support and Case Management Office. And, you know, because, you know, I hate her. She is super criminal against me. This woman, if I'm a judge, I will jail him. I, I will jail her for a lifetime because what she has done with me in the past. So based on that, she bring, you know, a person, his name is Tim Cameron, and he is even worse than her. He is a horrible person. But anyways, so I said, okay, you know, I feel very, very 
traumatized. I want to meet with the dean of the student. Until today, you see here, here's my request. Here's my request. Until today, I didn't meet with the dean of student. But this is actually violates the code of conduct. Seriously, why is this? Let's see. But before we see it, okay, let's see the code of conduct. So let's see the code of conduct. So we have article uh, 116 and then 17. Let's go. Okay, here we go. So article 16 and article 17, they literally talk about that. I must have every evidence, every evidence that proved that I did what they are saying. Until today, they never provided me with any evidence, zero evidence. And I must also defend myself. Until today, I didn't defend myself. Until today, I didn't defend myself. How can I defend myself when there is no evidence? There is no evidence whatsoever. So how can I defend myself? So basically, they banned me so that they will not do investigation against Bruce Medican, who is the person who committed all of the manipulation. That's why they banned me. Because if Bruce Medican have done nothing, they will not ban me. Okay? But let's see what happened in the meeting. So let's listen to this voice, voice recording to realize how horrible those people are. Do you understand the letter that was given to you by, uh, by us on behalf of the Dean of Students? Uh, I, 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 don't, to you? I don't understand. So, so it is basically Dr. Bach who reported me or who? Who is the person who reported me? Who is that person that I, I talked to him many times in the weekend and he asked me to not to talk to him because basically Dr. Bach never asked me not to talk to him. So I don't understand the letter. Okay. The letter, is, is, is there is some information written in the letter? I don't understand I think, them. But, right. yeah. I think what our concern is, and I think you share it, is that it sounds like there's some real tension with your supervisors right now, right? For all sorts of reasons. And because, because of the false promises. Isra can speak about how I'm... Here is something. You guys notice what happened? I'm asking about the name of the supervisor who I communicated with him that triggered the BNG. You see the red herring logical fallacy that Tim Cameron have used? He didn't answer the question. He went to another thing. That's just horrible. Until, you know, so basically this meeting happened on February 19th. We don't know what happened. February 19th and we do not know what happened. We don't know, I don't know. What happened? What, where is the university allegation? Where is the evidence? I don't even know who I communicated with. Who said that? Because I didn't, you know, this just proved that I didn't communicate with Buck because I'm confused. Okay, I said, okay, maybe Bruce Medican had lied. And then I will be easily proved that I don't even have a cell phone number and I have a voice recording with him. He's saying, I do not have a cell phone number, by the way. He said that to me. So let's see, let's hear. But you see, you see have you seen, have you heard that red herring? That's horrible. This is in McMaster University administration. Let's listen to the voice, the other voice recording. Because of your current behavior, okay? It is not, it is not going to, not I until, mean, oh man. I mean, the people that are around me, surrounded me by me, my sisters, my friends, all of those people, we disagree with you. Well, that's fine, that's, that's fine, that's but I'm not telling you. I was, telling you. I was no. sitting here and I was watching your face go purple. And, not, you you were yelling, and you were yelling it out. You are not, you're not a psychiatrist. I don't need to be a psychiatrist to know that your behavior is something that yeah. could compromise the rights, excuse me. They yeah. could compromise the rights of others. You do not get to sit in an office and yell at people, even if you don't mean to be yelling at them. Yeah. That can scare people. It's okay in this office with Allison and I because we're used to it. Other people are not. So it's not acceptable. What is the can I tell you? So I, I'm going to just give you an example, yeah. okay? Yeah. So a person from the office next door has just asked whether or not security needs to be called. And I'll tell you the reason why. It's because it is atypical in this university environment to have students raise their voice, right? And it has not just been happening for 15 minutes. Have you seen that, guys? So he justify his loud voice and then... Uh, uh, Tim Cameron and then Alison Drohasny get outside and then she returned. And then she told me, uh, you are aggressive, you have angry, loud voice. Okay, you guys also are performing it right now. You are attacking me, that's why my voice is getting loud. But let's see, let's see how horrible, how, how those people have horrible mentality. They are governing the university in my matter, just imagine to, with whom I'm dealing with. 
been consistently for an hour and a half, you've been up and down, up and down this scale, so much so that I'm raising my voice in response to all of this. I am, this is inappropriate at this point for you that's to engage. Right. And that's, it is not I like, I like the fact that you raise your voice, just to understand that raising, raising the voice is a natural action. It is, the human behavior of yeah. it is when you raise your voice, the other person, the natural reaction is to try to echo and it, so that's because you're voice. not listening. Okay. So, because, because so I'm I'm to to so right. this meeting is ending now. Done. But this meeting is over. Because, yeah. yeah, about his high voice, I think maybe you know. I, I think it, the, the, this the is the average. I mean, uh, no. average. No. He, he's with, with respect. We live in this community. We work in this community. We get complaints about student behavior all the time, and there is a consistent standard that is expected, and that is what we were basing our assessment on. So I mean, I mean, I mean. So, so, so. Alison said, you know, this is the last thing before I move. Alison said her voice is getting loud because I'm talking loudly. So similarly, I can tell you, I'm, I have been prevented to has my have my right to talk to the associate dean of graduate studies. That's why my voice is getting loud. I have the right to to access my glasses that I have created. That's why my voice is getting loud. So many things making making my voice making my voice loud, and then so many things justify my loud voice. However, you see my voice is uh, my, my loud voice is unacceptable. But you see, you can justify your loud voice. So so how we can manage this? So I'm a, we're going to um, follow up with you with some information about. As you see here, again, a r another red herring. So I'm saying, okay, you guys are doing loud voice. You are banning me from the university. You are destroying my life because I have loud voice because there is a serious discrimination and serious scientific research malpractice happening against my, my research. So you are condemning me with loud voice. So you just understand here what happened. The phone calls is false. It's not there. And accordingly, they switch it and say, okay, you have loud voice. You just want to create anything to ban me from the university. You see how horrible they are? Okay. So now, as I say, as I said, the code of conduct prevent all of this to happen because I do not have access to any of these things. I must have access to the evidence and the evidence must be satisfying. Okay, so there is zero evidence. Okay, so we do, we did our investigation. So my sisters, you know, after what, after this meeting, I was, I was, my life was just horrible. I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping all of the day, crying every, all of the time. My life, you know, I really wish to die at that moment. This is just horrible, dealing with gangsters. Because they are banning me, and instead of doing the IT and security card investigation, and instead, instead of being respectful university and comply to the declaration of Helsinki for their research ethics and to comply even to their own research ethics and instead of that they banned me okay so let's me let's open the code of conduct again as you see here guys you can abuse and read them again I didn't have any of my rights guys to even to, to defend myself as you heard as you heard they didn't even told me they didn't even tell me the name of the professor. So what's gonna happen next? We wanna know the name of the professor. So my sisters went to Professor Muhammad Bakr. My sisters went to Professor Muhammad Bakr to understand what happened. So let's see what happened. I was telling professor and personal phone number after So what I, I'm going to translate this in Arabic. So my sister Isra Muhammad, an expert in human visual awareness and human auditory awareness, okay? She got her graduate studies from, from Germany. What she is saying to Dr. Burke, she is reading the letter. So she is telling him, they said the reason is because Ahmed communicated with one of his supervisors for 20 times, etc. She read the letter. So Burke said, no, la. Okay, see, so he said no. Let's see it to this again. So he say no, it is not the reason. As if he said something, somebody pushed him to say something. Remember guys, remember, I tried to understand the reason since February 5th, 
So basically, they could create a story with Muhammad Bakr. And instead of providing me with evidence, like the call logs, they can tell Bakr, okay, you know, we already wrote the letter, please, uh, Dr. Bakr. You know, we're gonna fix the problem very fast, please, let's co cooperate with us. You understand? Because they didn't mention the reason in the very beginning. So they can manipulate the system now. But let's continue what Muhammad Bakr is saying. So he is saying, look at this. Alessandro Hasling is asking Muhammad Bak. She's asking him without it, without it. So basically, she's asking him specific questions as if she knows something, as she is, she is hacking our cell phones. She's asking him a specific question. Do Ahmed calling you on your personal cell phone? What, a, what weird question is this? Nobody go and ask other people whether with another person communicating with them in their personal cell phone. Why she is asking that question? Because she knows something. Most likely, it is Alessandro Hasling who harassed Muhammad Bakr if the harassment happened. Most likely, through her hijacked system. Maybe Hamilton police, Hamilton police helped her. Nobody knows. But why she is asking that question? She is asking Muhammad Bakr a very weird question. Not Muhammad Bakr is going and complaining. No, she is asking him. That's the translation. The weekend. Yeah, look at this. He's saying la 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 la. So he's denying very hard. He's denying very hard. No, it is not the reason. I don't even say that. So he's denying very hard. If you hear this little piece of uh, recording, so he's denying very hard. So what's going on here? <laughs> عندها هناك سنتس من هنا على سنتس من حطت اللي طب هي اللي كتبها اليسون امال مين اللي كتبها ولا ولا كامل هو از سي هير محمد باك سسبكت ذات اليسندرو هاسلينج از از رايتنج ذا ليتر اوكي بيزيكلي اليسندرو هاسلينج وانت تيرمينيت ماي لايف ليترلي بيكوز يو نو جو اند ريد ذا ريبورت اوف فيصل بابا اند يو اندرستاند ذس لا هم ما اعرفش هم قعدوا سمعوا كلمه من بروس ملكا على كلمه مني مش عارف ايه انا قلت لهم ان احمد بيتصل بيا كتير في الويكند بس 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 مش هو ده السبب ولا انا ولا قلت لهم هي ستاينج هير بس ات از نوت ذا ريزون اند دي دينت اوبجكت ات او ريلي اوكي يو دينت اوبجكت ات اوكي سو وات از ذا بروبلم واي ام باند واي ام باند نو بادي نوز اوكي ليتس ليسن يو نو بعد ان هو فيري اجريسيف انجري واي أنا شايفة إن دي أتاك بصراحة على حقوقها بس 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 سامحني بس ده جاست إيجور ليتس ليتس موف فورورد ده حصل إن ذا باست سو جاست جاست تو أندرستاند ذس بوينت يو نو ذا ليتر فيبروري 5th محمد باك وي ميت ماي سيسترز ميت وذ محمد باك فيبروري 24th سو وي أر توكينج أباوت 20 دايز أراوند 3 ويكس سو ذي كان مانج إيفري ثينج بيكوز وي أر كومبلينينج هو إز ذات بيرسون هو إز ذات بروفيسور هو سيد ذات So they can manage everything, you know, they can cook everything in their kitchen, okay? So, Muhammad Bakr, even after the three weeks, he is denying. Just imagine what's going on here. He's denying. So, Bakr is saying that, that, that this, this decision is, had been taken before you know that, that decision, two weeks Two, two weeks, you know, so two weeks and then they generate the decision. Okay, so here's the thing. Actually, Buck know about that decision on February 11th. That decision had been written on February 4th. So basically, there is a, more than a week, more than a week between when Buck know and when they take the decision. But as I told you, they took the decision based on the fact that I requested for security card investigation and IT investigation. And I articulated two reports against Bruce Malikin, and they want to investigate them. That's the reason. Bakr is going to say the same words of mine, because every rational person understands the actual reasons. So my sister says, based on what that decision is taken? So Bakr is going to respond. Right? So he's saying, based on the tension between Ahmed and Bruce Milliken. So basically, he's talking about the February 3rd email. 
He's saying he is he misinterpreted, and he's saying that I said that Bruce Milliken is stealing my ideas. I said no, no. I said Bruce Milliken is fabricating, the ex fabricating the Excel sheets. He's doing something wrong, and the data is not in alignment with the actual data that I'm collecting. So there must be something wrong. So that's what Muhammad Bakr is saying. He's saying the same words now, but in Arabic. Please, guys, if you understand Arabic, just go and translate it. No, no, Ahmed Bakr insisted. No, Ahmed had sent. Okay, yeah, I sent the February 3rd email requesting for IT and security guard investigation. What is the problem? Are we living in a state of law or in a jungle? What's the problem? My super, my secondary supervisor is doing something horribly wrong in the scientific research ethics, and I'm, I'm reporting him. I thought that McMaster University is a respectful university. Okay, now I understand that I'm completely wrong about how I perceive McMaster University. <laughs> He's saying it, it, had, it, is, it, is, it had been translated as an acquisition that Milliken is stealing my ideas. If you guys go and read my email, my email, you'll understand that I said the following. I will wait until the investigation is taking place. So I didn't even raise acquisitions. I said, I will wait until the IT and security guard investigation are made, are concluded. Until today, just imagine, four years until today, the investigation has not been done. And we are going to the courts everywhere. <laughs> no, that meeting actually, you know, I got cheated, and then I found myself in Alessandro Hustling office. Uh, happened on January 30, okay? And Bakr is referring to it. So Muhammad Bakr said, okay, we thought everything now is fine on January 13, 30. No, not, nothing is fine. You know, I have a problem. Bruce Milliken must be very straightforward in his research ethics. Otherwise, I would not work with him. So uh, on February the 2nd, you know, just three days after, I discovered that the Excel sheets had been deleted, the genuine Excel sheets, the shareable genuine Excel sheets had been deleted, and, they added, and someone added new Excel sheets to disallow me and Muhammad Bakr from, access, from accessing the genuine Excel sheets. So now Bruce Milliken again, Bruce Milliken or he ordered someone or he did it by himself. The security card and the IT investigation should tell us who did that. But they know it is Bruce Milliken. That's why they didn't do they didn't achieve the investigation until today. <laughs> بيتين برضو ملك كان مغاير الفايلز وكان دكول أنا عندي سبع إيفيدنس تاني وأنا ممكن أطلع فعلى طول الموضوع اتطور هو ساعتها اتخذ القرار البعد. So what Muhammad Bakr is saying literally, he said I send one evidence and then afterwards I and I said okay we have seven other evidences so the university banned me because I have evidences. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine they banned me because I have evidence that my supervisor is violating the research ethics and the declaration of Helsinki. He's saying that literally in the voice recording. Can you imagine that this person, Muhammad Bakr, is the chair of McMaster Electrical and Computer Engineering Department? Can you imagine that? Okay, so now let's see. You know, I'm sorry because the Arabic, I know the Arabic, you know, I think I have a translation of this, but let's see. What Muhammad Bakr stated in the same meeting. Let's see this. So Muhammad Bakr stated, so basically, Muhammad Bakr did not want me to accuse Bruce Milliken of fabricating the data, but in the same time, he's saying in the same meeting, by the way, shockingly, shockingly, he's saying, I suggested, uh, you see here, here's the thing? I suggested that Ahmed to give him, means Milliken, 10, 10 of my scientific projects, and the graduate is five. And then Ahmed can do whatever he wants after his doctorate. So what is this? In the criminal court, in the criminal law, Dr. Back, this is called extortion. Okay? This is called extortion. And this is called conspiracy to prosecute. Okay? Let's move forward.
cool. Let's mount and move. So here is Muhammad Bakr saying, Astahlifkum Billah. So I swear to Allah, please, please, guys, just listen to me. Listen to me one one time, please. Let's see what is his what, what why he is begging us. What he wants. He's saying the return. So Ahmad's if you guys want Ahmad to return to the university. Ahmad must do whatever the university wants. So I don't know to give my ideas. I mean, he mean, right? So basically, he's saying Ahmad must do what the university wants so that he can return to the university orally. Okay, but I will not give my ideas. I will not give anything, and I will not see anybody. I want the investigation to happen. I want the IT and security guard investigation to happen until today. I will not allow anybody to dismiss these investigations. So, and then he asked, he requested from my sisters to write an, a letter of apology. Just imagine, just imagine. So I'm complaining against a person who is doing scientific research my practice. I have to go and complain to him. Okay? And remember, remember, now I can accuse Bruce Milliken because he is the chair of the department, so he has access to the wall building. So he blocked my access because he's fabricating the data upstairs. Who deleted the Excel, Excel sheets? Who, who entered through, the, through their security cards and get inside there and deleted the genuine Excel sheets? Until now, no investigation has been achieved. So, Muhammad Bak just asked me to give my ideas to Bruce Milliken and to apologize to him. Wow, you see, guys, how simple resolution is this? So, the university is banning me so that they can take my scientific projects, and uh, I have to write an apology for Bruce Milliken because he want to take my scientific projects. So, this is how the university is governing its affairs. So, basically, they are using the militarized power to steal, literally, to steal people things. Because otherwise, if nobody, if, if what they are scared from, if they did the investigation, okay, we know, we know who did what, who is fabricating the data, who deleted the Excel sheets, and everything is very sharp, and the investigation, the investigation is done. This investigation will not take an hour. Just imagine I'm requesting it for four years, and it will not take an hour. So, who deleted the Excel sheets, Diog Welsh? Who deleted them? If it's gonna take just one hour, and nobody wanna do it, so you know, guys, who deleted it. Milliken, who is not able to So, Muhammad Bakr is saying, Milliken, Ahmed will not be able to win against them. So, he's saying, Ahmed would not be able to win against Milliken, even if he has one million piece of evidence. Wow, American must be a god then. So let's see the consistency here. Let's see the consistency. Okay, Muhammad Bakri wants me to, to give my scientific projects to Bruce Milliken. The university banned me because Bruce Milliken is deleting the genuine Excel sheets and, and manipulating the scientific research data so that he can convince me that my scientific projects are not working so that he can steal them afterwards. So let's see, here is, we have Bruce Milliken grant. Let's look at it. This is what the government gave me. This is his grant. Completely blacked out. Completely. And I see here, nothing, nothing, nothing is, is written there. Completely blacked out. Completely blacked out. Completely blacked out. As you see here, completely blacked out. So you see the consistency here, guys. You see, completely blacked out. Literally, completely blacked out. Nothing. Nothing. Everything is blacked out. Everything is blacked out. Everything. The only thing here is defining my name, my present position, a PhD candidate, so I should defend my PhD thesis. I have my thesis since 2019. They didn't allow me to defend my PhD thesis. As you see here, guys, they treated me in a very bad way. We're gonna explain that in a moment. So I take my courses, I take everything. I wrote my thesis back to 2019. And you guys, I will show you how people are perceiving my work soon.
Okay, so it's completely blacked out. So what shall I do? Nobody knows. So basically, you see here, they are they want to steal me forcefully, literally. They are using their power to steal me. Let's look at here. So here we're going to talk about the fact that okay, my sister, as an expert in vision research, and he, she got her 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 graduate studies from Germany in vision research, and she's doing brand imaging and many other things. She's even. She, what she have done is way way harder than what Milliken is doing. But anyways, you know she learned you know lots of things in a short time of a period of time. So, but basically, she knows what is the high quality research, the novel ideas. She can distinguish between them. Once she came to me to, in Hamilton and I showed her my work, she told me those guys will do everything to take your ideas. You have to be very curious. When I, when I showed her my ideas, you know, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm an engineer, but I'm very interested in vision research. So basically, I read a lot in vision research, and then I discovered many things. So that's what my sister said. But let's see. Now, this is very important. Let's see how McMaster is lying, is lying, is committing public message chef. How McMaster security is committing public message chef. Let's see. So this is actually. A report from McMaster Security who tried to harass my sister and my sisters and they actually harass them in a significant way. Let's read it. April 25th, 2019, my sisters went to Steve Bray because he, because he was the chair of, Mac, of McMaster Research Ethics Board. So they want to, they, she, my, my two sisters went to visit him because my sister, as I told you, she's an expert in the field. Okay? She talked to him. He told her, okay, we're going to process this, but also you must notify Diog Walsh about this. But once she, she started to talk about Addison, uh, Addison Schooler, he started to be very, uh, very anxious and very uncomfortable. Okay? So what happened is, let's see the plan. So they tried actually as a security. They are going, my sisters, you know, without me knowing. I didn't know anything. They are just trying to help me without me knowing. They are trying. You guys have to understand, my sister is an expert in the field, so she is going to resolve the issue by her hands, literally, without me knowing. Okay, so they are going here, as you see here, and then some people are trying to harass them. So as you see here, you see, you guys, you know, you just abuse and, and read this, this uh, red box. So as you see here, they are saying uh, that the females, meaning my sisters, were not aggressive or disrespectful at any point during the conversation. They are talking here about what happened with Welsh. So they are not aggressive or disrespectful. Just look at this. Okay, let's move here. Then they are talking about, if we look at here, okay, she was identified by her employee, according to Kimberly Mason. Kimberly Mason is working for that, okay, and then here, Mason. As you see here, no safety concerns were noted as the sisters were very reserved during the wall conversation and departed without any issues. Okay? So, as you see here, with Mason, no safety concerns. With Welsh, no, no disrespect or aggression. Nothing is there. So, what time is this? February, uh, uh, April 25th. Okay? Let's see what uh, the Ontario Commissioner gave us. You're going to see now different information, contradictory information. So which one we should believe? Let's see. Let's see. Where is IBC? Here is IBC. Let's read this. OK. They are talking about the same date, April 25th. And then they described my sisters to be 
I do not, I, do, I cannot understand, I cannot read this word, but you know, brilliant and aggressive. So describe them as aggressive people. But when this, it's October 27th, 2022. So basically at the time of them, when they are making the report, they are describing them not aggressive and reserved and very polite and all of these things. And now they are describing them in the same day, for the same day, they are describing them to be aggressive with both of the people, Welsh and even uh, Kimberly Mason. Say again, aggressive with Kimberly Mason Integrity Office. They are, they are describing them as aggressive uh, people, despite the fact, so we, we accept this, when? When we accept this? We accept this October 27th, 2022. When we access the original report, we access actually it in, in November or something like that, you know. Actually, it, it, my sister gave it to me. I don't know where, where it was. But here's just to, to tell you guys that those people are providing contradictory statements about something significant. You got to tell me, Ahmad, why is this a significant? I will tell you. Because they issue a ban letter. And the ban letter is stating that clearly that if they are found on campus for a, for a year, they will be arrested. And there is, there is no concern at all. They are not aggressive, so they are lying. The university is now providing contradictory statement. And this just proves that all of what happened is just fabricated stories. They are fabricating lots of stories, so, and I have to defend myself. Defend myself about contradictory statements? How can I do that? How can I do that? The university is lying, I will not respond to them. But what they are doing is, they are, as I said, you, know, you guys know how the arrest happened to me. They traumatized me in a significant way, in a horrible way, so that you know, I will be traumatized. When I'm traumatized, you know, sometimes you know, I cannot just control my emotions. You understand, guys, because they are stealing all, everything. They stole my youth. You know, I'm suffering for eight years because of those criminals. Alison Rohasling, especially, Doug Welsh and Alison Rohasling. They destroyed my life. You see here the contradictory statements. Okay, let's move forward and see. I will show you something that my sisters do not even know because this is April 25th, 2019. This is, my sister is writing an email on May the 1st, May the 1st, 2019. You see, they are looking at it for 28, 20, for more than 30, around 30 times. So they're writing it for more than, they are viewing it for more than 300 times, I'm sorry. My sister here is talking about we need to do, we need to achieve the research ethics. We, we, we wanna make sure that it is, we wanna make sure that everything is, is working properly. And we wanna do an investigation against Bruce Milliken. And we wanna, we wanna know what's gonna happen against Ahmed scientific projects and other things. So she's speaking about this on May the 1st. Why? Because what happened on April 25th is literally nothing, according to the original investigation. So it's literally nothing. Nothing had happened. And by the way, guys, you know, who is governing the McMaster Security and Parking Services? It is Jeremy Kerr, right? So basically, you're going to see lots of lies in the reports. But I, I just, you know, I just want to show you that from their own paperwork, they are providing contradictory statements, as we stated before. Okay, so let's see what is mentioned to Isra in her BNG letter. So basically, Isra has a conversation with Chelsea Gibson. Okay, and by the way, guys, we are we are not connected at all. And because Isra went Isra on May the third, she was in Ottawa, in Montreal. She was visiting these two cities at that, mo at that time, and she returned on May 17th. And we had proven that in a, in a previous video. We had proven that in a previous video. But let's, let's see what happened. Uh, when Isra called Chelsea Gibson and she went to talk to her, to her. When she tried to talk to her, Bilar Mishwad met with her and served her through the security on May 17th with this BNG letter. And the BNG letter clearly stated that she has done, done something horrible on April 25th. We don't know what is this, the, the thing. What, 
the only thing happened, she's an expert and she wanna talk to Diog Welsh and Kimberly Mason, the integrity officer. She wanna talk to them, the Dean of Graduate Studies and the integrity officer. I told her, I told her do not approach Diog Welsh, she's a criminal, but she went to him, okay? And that's what happened. And they said they are fine, they are okay, nothing is wrong, but they, 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 they will binge them, why? Okay, now we understand. So the university is using McMaster security and the power of the police, the Hamilton police, you know, Jiren Dekel is the exit chief of Hamilton police. And so basically he has a massive network within the Hamilton police to manipulate the Hamilton police and to manipulate uh, the courthouse even to some extent. And they are using him. McMaster University administration is using him. So what happened here is the following. Isra was served with the BNG letter on May 17th. And you can read here, they are saying ongoing investigation for, for incident happened on April 25th. What happened on April 25th? There is a person, an expert in the field, want to report a person, another person, the associate dean of guided studies and the chair of the department, psychology and neuroscience department, she just want to report him. Do you have issues with these guys? So basically, this is what McMaster University, how McMaster University are governing its affairs. I'm so sorry, guys, I'm a little bit tired right now. So as you see here, you can read the, the third paragraph. The third paragraph says that if, if she that said that it, th this BNG status prohibit her from entering the campus. Otherwise, she will be arrested and will be charged with criminal harassment. Can you imagine that, guys? Two people has done literally nothing to receive that letter, to be prohibited from entering a public body, a public institution. Can you imagine that? Because Bruce Milliken is fabricating the scientific research data. He's fabricating them in front of my eyes. Okay? He's fabricating them. He deleted the exercise sheets. So basically, he wanna something. And here's the thing, you know, I do not trust his research because what I have seen is horrible from his, from his side. And you understand, guys, you know, when you deal with your supervisor, you will understand everything about him, right? So I understand many, many things that I do not want to talk about them, but just I want to just focus on the fact that the university is banning my two sisters and they have literally done nothing. Literally have done nothing. And as you see here, in the end of the letter, okay, this letter looks false and looks, you know, having reach, right? Having more information, how to remove the BNG, how to appeal these crazy decisions, how to do that. So basically they said, okay, communicate with the vice president administration, which is Roger, Roger Crowdery. So basically I communicated with Chelsea Gibson as well and uh, me and my sister, and she told me, Ahmad, to remove the BNG so that we can start your complaint in the Human Rights Office or whatever. First of all, you have to remove it. I told her how to remove it. She told me, you have to apply, uh, to, apply to, to, to send all of your, your defense to Roger Cloudry. So basically, I immediately, I told my sister, you know, I'm very tired right now. Please do these things to Roger Cloudry. And we talked to Roger Crowdery's secretary, and everything is uh, super fine. They told us in 30 days, we're gonna review everything, and in 30 days, your BNG will be removed, most likely. But the problem here is just imagine that, guys. We do not have access to our personal information. So basically, we have limited access to our personal information. Now we started to have, now. So basically, they do not want us to, to access our personal information because they have contradictory statements, as we see here. Here, they are describing my sisters to be aggressive. In the two occasions, when they met with Kimberly Mason, the, uh, the integrity officer, and when they met with uh, Diog Welsh, I do not see uh, Steve Bray here. I don't know why, but that's what happened.
So as I said, my sisters, I'm sorry, the, vi the, the recording had stopped, I'm not sure why. As you see here, they are describing my sisters here to be aggressive, but this is on October 27, 2022. But here, they describe them to be not aggressive and respectful. They are describing them to be respectful and not aggressive. Was for Welsh and Kimberly Mason, the problem here is, the problem here is the university is providing contradictory statements. We have to emphasize on this. They are providing, I do not know why they didn't mention Steve Bray at all in the two reports. I do not know why. Despite the fact that Steve Bray, my sisters told me, he called or, you know, he, he, he reached the Doug Welsh immediately afterwards. So he's a, he is a member of this conspiracy. And you understand, he is the chair of McMaster, McMaster University Research Ethics Board. So they didn't mention his name. We cannot understand the reason for a moment, but let's see whether it is only ourselves who report that McMaster University administration are, are, are providing contradictory statements. No, not only us. It is Nature Journal with impact factor of 70. Okay, let's see here. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Okay, here we go. The university, here we go, okay, here in this area. The university, the university has made contradictory but public statement, and they talk this about this a lot. I will leave these documents for you guys to, to read it. So it's not for me and my sisters only. The contradictory statements is not, not only for me and my sisters, no. This is a behavior, a systematic behavior from McMaster University administration. Contradictory statements. This is nature, guys, you see here? Just let's zoom in out. This is Nature Journal. You see here? Nature, volume, you see here, August 25th. This Nature, that's not me. Nature is, talk, is saying that the University, McMaster University is providing contradictory public statement. Public statement, not even personal statement, public statement. Public statements. So basically afterwards, based on the recommendation of Chelsea Gibson, I afterwards applied to remove the BNG. The, it started actually, it started on, on May 13th, as you see here, May 13th. My sister wrote the emails on my behalf. I asked her to do that. And then afterwards, and then afterwards, um, uh, and then afterwards, uh, Alex from the Roger Crowdery office she wrote an email to Isra on May 29th, asking her that it is me that we should submit everything. I talked to Alex and I told her, I agree with all of the information. It is my submission. She told me, okay, just forward them to me. I did the forward that you see here and I talked briefly about what we have in the conversation. We have the voice, the phone call conversation. It's had been recorded and she told me, great. You just have to wait for 30 days to have this decision to be reviewed. Until today, I didn't receive the decision. Until today. Not only that, they removed Roger Cloudry from the university. Not only that, they removed the position that's called Vice President Administration from the university as if I'm the center of the universe. Just imagine what they're doing. They literally manipulate the entire system. Okay, so let's see whether McMaster just scare my two sisters only or they are scaring everybody. They are literally scaring everybody. As I told you guys, I had 47 eyewitnesses along with seven evidences. The eyewitnesses, you know, many of them are undergrad. So basically they are getting scared when they hear, you know, intervention from the police court, these things, they are getting scared. They are just, you know, you know, just kids, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I don't mean to say, I don't mean to say kids, but they are young. So they are getting scared very fast, right? They told me, Ahmed, we're going to say what we have seen in your experiments only. We would not be engaged in court. We do not be engaged with the police. Please, no, not these things. Some people told me, okay, if civil court, okay, we might, we might, we might engage in them. Okay, so I understand this. They're young. They're getting scared. One of these 
people, his name is Yusuf Suedan. He actually finished his medical doctorate from McMaster University, by the way. And uh, let's hear what you say. But now I'm afraid that he's going to turn around and say, Yusuf, you didn't do your job. I don't know what to do. I'm going to make a problem in the future. And you know, you're going to be a PNG, and your brothers are going to be a PNG. So how do you stop them from giving me a PNG? I can't do anything to the university, but they can do harm to me. So I... So what, he, what Yusuf Sudan here is saying, they give you a PNG, and they give your sisters, two of your sisters, and one of them is an expert in vision research, PNGs. What they will... Blo- they would not be stopped from giving me also a PNG. So he's, he's worried because his name is being started to be written in the communications, okay? So he's worried that McMaster will know that he is one of my friends. Then, if they know that, they're going to PNG him. Just imagine how horrible life I have. This is not a state of law. This is a jungle. What McMaster have done with me, against me, against my scientific research, is extremely horrible. All of these things they are doing is just because they are feeling safe to commit crimes because they are protected by Jérôme Dicker, the ex-chief of Hamilton police, who had a lengthy discriminatory profile against black and Muslim people. Okay, so let's see this email. So here we also talk about the fact that QB, the union, the Canadian union, QB, QB3096, the QB actually conspiring against me. When I got arrested, you know, they told me we, can, we brought four investigators, we're going to do the investigation immediately. A day after, I got arrested from inside my house. A day after, and the arrest was extremely horrible. I shared with you guys how the arrest was. So let's see here what happened. So one of external, an external faculty member, actually from Finland, University of Helsinki, he is saying, okay, what about if I talk with Welsh and resolve the problem informally? And instead of going to the court and make the case very big, and you know, because everybody's gonna lose if we, may, if we do not resolve it informally, right? But you know, they have a plan. McMaster has a plan, especially Alessandro Hasling. The plan is to terminate me, okay? To terminate me, literally. So that's a plan. But you know, he tried to resolve, an external faculty member tried to resolve the issue. And he's actually from Finland. He's a British, but from Finland University. From, so he lived in Finland, okay? So let's see what, what uh, what he is writing, what, what Brad Walshik, a staff member at the union, is writing to that faculty member. He's writing the following. My advice would be not to contact Dr. Welsh. So he's, he's telling Dr. Campbell not to contact Dr. Welsh, as the interim orders in place would generally prohibit people contacting the university on Ahmed's behalf. Okay? Aside from that, aside from a select, you know, he means Alessandra Hasling, the person who destroyed my life in the past, and she destroyed my life in the few, uh, now. So she actually, she actually destroyed eight, eight years of my most precious years in my life. He's saying number of people, you know, he means Alessandra Hasling, directing message to a specific university contact. So basically, there is a professor trying to communicate with a professor, and he's familiar with all of what happened. He tried to resolve the problem informally so that nobody will steal my things. Nobody will manipulate my emotions or manipulate my, my research anymore. So that's what he want to do. Okay? So Welsh, Brad Welsh, is advising him not to do that. And that person is very familiar with my research. So basically, Brad Walsh is conspiring against me. Because there is no, you know, logically speaking, what is going on here? The university do not want to make an investigation. The university do not want other people from outside to do the investigation or even to resolve the problem informally. Just imagine what's going on here. Lastly, 
I just want to show one, the first recommendation to be an assistant professor, okay, had been written to me on April 27, 2020. And until now, I didn't obtain my PhD. Let's zoom in. I just want to show you, you know, every, and I just, I just brought one because, you know, everything, you know, my file is extremely lengthy. So I brought just one. I brought the first one. Let's read here. I just want you guys to read the thread box. So I will zoom in. You can read it. Okay. Let's see the other red box. Let's, let's see the other two red boxes. Thank you guys and have a great day.